So I'll be talking about um, brain cancer in particular, but you know the information that we have is is related to most forms of cancer. Um, and what I what I'd like to do is um, also address new approaches that we might be able to use uh, to provide greater success for management. Okay, I don't have any um, anything to declare. Okay, so uh, let's let me talk a little bit now about uh, malignant brain tumors. Um, now these are highly invasive. Uh, the prognosis is not good. Um, and, and I said here, invasive and vascular, of course, this idea of angiogenesis, the vascularization of the tumor, these kinds of things are, are difficult to manage. Uh, the incidence may be increasing. I, I don't want to say it is. Um, uh, there's some epidemiological evidence from cell phone use to suggest that it might be, but this still has to be worked out. Um, what is becoming more and more recognized is that many of these malignant tumors, especially glioblastoma, are infected with human cytomegalovirus. And I will show you later how we think this is contributing to the destabilization uh, of the metabolic uh, activities inside these cells. And as I think uh, we are all, all aware, uh, most of the therapies that have been used uh, are largely uh, ineffective in providing long -term, uh, a long-term solution to this problem. All right, so here are a few uh, examples of brain tumors. Now, the whole, f the whole area can be broken down into two major areas, that is the primary brain tumors and the secondary brain tumors. Uh, the primary brain tumors are those that initiate uh, within the neural parenchyma itself, in the brain itself. Um, GBM, glioblastoma multiforme, is, um, whoop, I'm sorry about that, okay. GBM here, you know, it's, this is a, a tumor that you've heard a lot about recently and, you know, people struggling uh, to deal with this tumor. The, pro the problem of, is, of course, it's usually multicentric and by the time it's detected, many of the cells have already migrated uh, throughout the brain, so it becomes surgically not possible to, to, to cure this kind of a disease. Um, so most of the treatments are palliative. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a tumor mostly in adults that does happen in children to a much lower extent. But uh, in this case, this is a medulloblastoma, more common in children than, than adults, and it primarily involves the cerebellum, uh, very, a very deadly kind of disease, involves several surgical resections. Um, but they all can, also can be highly invasive. You can see the size of the cerebellar tumor here. It's quite, quite extensive. Now, about 25% of all cancer deaths actually result from metastasis to the brain from some other organ. And this is a melanoma metastasized to the brain. You know, breast will go to brain, uh, colon goes to brain, lung goes to brain. And, and this becomes a real challenge again. You're, you're dealing now with another kind of invasive cell inside the brain. Um, and this is also very, has been very difficult to, uh, to deal with. Now, now, the big problem here is, as I see it, uh, um, uh, this is a provocative question, is cancer a nuclear genetic disease or is it a mitochondrial metabolic disease? And it's extremely important in my mind um, to, to address this question because it determines and dictates the strategies, the therapeutic strategies that will be used to manage the disease. Now the question comes of course from uh, the uh, NCI website, the National Cancer Institute website, which listed 24 provocative questions to drive cancer research for the next remainder of the century and possibly beyond. But this question is not part of that because I, uh, most, most textbooks, most people think cancer is a nuclear genetic disease. Consequently, most of the therapeutic approaches to this disease have been focused uh, on, on nuclear issues, gene mutations and this kind of thing. Um, as I said, textbooks, you know, we teach biology at Boston College, and you can see it in the, in the freshman biology books, the senior uh, biochemistry books, advanced cell and molecular biology books. Cancer is, according to the textbooks, a genetic disease. Hanahan and Weinberg's extensive review shows that cancer is a genetic disease, and what they refer to that basically is a nuclear genetic problem of mutations and this kind of thing. Um, but the issue is, is that uh, it, it may not be a nuclear genetic disease. Emerging evidence is saying that it's not. Now, where do the, 
The other idea is, is that where did the, the idea of cancer as a metabolic disease come from? And it came from primarily the work of Otto Warburg in Germany uh, beginning in the 1920s. And he wrote this paper in 1956 to summarize his lifelong work, summarizing the key aspects of all cancers. Basically, he said cancer arises as damage to cellular respiration. And as we know, cellular respiration takes place within the mitochondria of the cell. So cancer is essentially uh, a mitochondrial kind of disease. Energy through fermentation will gradually compensate for insufficient respiration. If the respiration of the cell is not compensated for, the cell will die. So obviously a cell that cannot upregulate fermentation pathways will die and never become a tumor cell. So tumor cells have a transition away from respiration energy to fermentation energy. And Warburg indicated that this, he thought this would become eventually uh, irreversible. And then the cancer cells continue to ferment. Even when oxygen is pr presented in the environment, the cancer cell still ferments. And this is indicated by the production of lactic acid. And, and you hear a lot about the Warburg effect, um, uh, this whole thing, a big research area of Warburg. You know, what is the Warburg effect? You know, all the people targeting the Warburg effect. Where did the Warburg effect come from? Well, Warburg clearly said what the effect was from. The effect was from destabilized energy metabolism through respiration. Now, this is a very simplistic uh, answer, and it's not, it's not acceptable to a large number of scientists who would like to make this disease far more complicated than it actually is. The issue is, is that we have a transition, a replacement of, 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 of respiratory energy uh, with fermentation energy. Now, this is just a brief, very simplistic overview of, of, of the dynamics of what goes on inside the, inside the tumor cell. So, you know, um, the majority of the energy in our cells is coming from the electron transport chain through oxidative phosphorylation. This is where most of the cells in our body derive the vast amount of energy to run the, 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 uh, the requirements, the metabolic requirements of the cell. Much less energy comes through the cytoplasm, through glycolysis, or even through the, the Krebs cycle, the TCA, through the succinyl-CoA synthase step. You can get some energy from these, but you can see they represent small amounts relative to the amount from uh, oxphos. In cancer cells, there is, a, there is a, um, a, 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 a greater amount of energy from these fermentation processes, these ancient forms of energy. Oxphos produces less energy in tumor cells than normal cells, but cancers, the tumor cells have a higher amount of energy coming from these and I say ancient, these are, these are forms of energy metabolism that existed on the planet before oxygen came. Uh, and so the cancer cells are reverting to some of this older energy. Now, this simply shows uh, a standard barrel-shaped orthodox picture of a mitochondrion. Those little stripes there, those are the cristae. Uh, the proteins of the electron transport chain are enriched in those cristae. Um, this is the diagram of the organelle. Uh, so, uh, and here, this is the a mitochondrion of a glioblastoma multiforme showing crystallysis, the breakdown of these cristae. Many cancer cells not only have crystallysis, not a brain cancer, many other kinds of cancer, they, have fewer, they also have fewer mitochondria. Now, it, it, if you look and say, well, these cristae uh, contain the proteins for oxidative phosphorylation, and you have an organelle that doesn't have that structure, structure function, it's going to be very unlikely, and it's shown from our biochemical work and others, these cells are fermenting. They're fermenting because the organelle that's required to respire is, it has the structural defects. There's no known cancer cell that has normal mitochondria. They're either deficient in numbers, or structure, or function, or something like this. As the result, these cells begin to ferment if they're going to stay alive. So this is the, this is the singular common metabolic malady of all cancer cells. They ferment to some extent. All right? So that now becomes a target for managing the disease.